Are you struggling to pass the CPA exam? Did your review course fail to fit your learning style? I'm Darius Clark of I-75 CPA Review, the number one course supplement, where the right teacher makes all the difference. All right, let's talk about the statement of cash flows for a not-for-profit entity because it is one of the required financial statements. There are three required financial statements for a not-for-profit. Statement of financial position, statement of activities, and the statement of cash flows, prepared using either the direct method or the indirect method. And the good news is, the statement of cash flows for a not-for-profit is similar to a for-profit. Same three sections in the cash flow statement, operating, investing, financing. Not like the government cash flow statement that we saw for the enterprise fund where there were four sections. That was government. That was GASB rules. With not-for-profit, we're back to FASB and this is just like a for-profit cash flow statement. Same three sections. The operating section is going to have inflows from exchange transactions with customers, unrestricted contributions, donations, interest and dividends received from investments. The investing section, buying and selling fixed assets, purchase of debt and equity securities, and the sales of collections. Some not-for-profits like a museum would have these fancy collections and when they sell something from the collection, that would be an investing cash inflow. And then when they use that cash to buy another collection, that would be an investing outflow for the museum. What would be a financing activity? Donations that are restricted to acquiring capital assets or, or donations that are restricted to constructing a new building or any borrowing transactions would be financing. So long-term borrowing would be financing inflow, repaying the principal would be financing outflow. How about this, an unrestricted cash contribution should be reported in a non-governmental not-for-profit organization's statement of cash flows as an inflow from what? What do you do with an unrestricted cash contribution? That's an operating inflow. Letter D is correct. So unrestricted cash contributions, always operating inflows. What if it was a restricted cash contribution? Then it would be a financing inflow. And we're always trying to anticipate the next question. That's the I-75 difference. But in this question, it's an unrestricted contribution, so the answer is D. A not-for-profit voluntary health and welfare organization should report a contribution for the construction of a new building as cash flows from which of the following in the statement of cash flows. And this, of course, would be a financing activity. Letter C is the correct answer. Cash contributions that are restricted by the donor are considered financing inflows for a not-for-profit. Look at letter D. It says capital financing activities. Why is that wrong? D is wrong because not-for-profits do not have a capital and related financing section of their statement of cash flows. Only the enterprise fund under government accounting rules has a capital financing section, a non-capital financing section, whereas not-for-profits are very similar to for-profit cash flow statements, only three sections, the same three sections that a for-profit company has, operating, investing, and financing. So here in a not-for-profit situation, like in this question, when there's a restricted contribution, a contribution restricted for the construction of a new building, that's always gonna be a financing activity. So make a note, very important on the exam, restricted contributions, will always be financing inflow. Let's take it a step further. What about when they start construction of the new building and they start spending that cash? Now it's an outflow. Is it an outflow from financing though? No, it becomes an outflow from investing because they're constructing a new building. So restricted inflows are financing inflows. But once the not-for-profit starts to spend that money as intended by the donor, like building the new project, then it becomes an investing outflow. Which takes us to this very important question. A non-governmental not-for-profit borrowed $35,000, which it used to purchase a truck. In which section of the organization's statement of cash flows should the transaction be reported? Well, this is really two transactions. The borrowing of the 35,000 
That's a financing inflow. Then the spending of the money to purchase the truck, that's an investing outflow. Which one says it best? A, cash inflow from financing, cash outflow from investing. Yes. A looks good. B, cash inflow from operating? No. C, cash inflow and cash outflow from investing? Not quite. D, cash inflow and cash outflow from financing? No. We look at it as two separate transactions. They borrowed $35,000. That's a financing inflow. Then they spent the $35,000 to purchase a truck. That's an investing activity. Letter A is the correct answer. And this is exactly the kind of question that I think they're going to ask you on the exam. How should a non-governmental not-for-profit report the receipt of dividends and interest on the statement of cash flows? And if you think you know, leave me the answer in the comments section. And don't forget to like and subscribe because it helps the channel out a lot. And if you need more help with not-for-profits or any part of the CPA FAR exam, go to cpaexamtutoring.com and get yourself on I-75 with me, Darius Clark, where the right teacher makes all the difference.